Safe and Sound, sponsored by White Mountain Fire and Life Safety. Today on the show, we have Kirk Webb, the Community Risk Manager, and Brent Mix, Captain of Timber Mesa Fire Medical. Hi, guys. How are you Hi. doing? Excited to have you here. Thanks hey, for having us. <laughs> it's Happy been to a be long, here. Well, it's yes. been a long time. Yep. Uh, people, I, I'm sure they've forgotten your face. I mean, when was the last time you were on here? <laughs> yeah, it's, I, I don't even remember. Yeah, it's been a long time. And you've been on here before, Chris. Uh, it's been a while. Yeah, yeah. yeah, but good information. So today we have you guys on here because we're going to talk about chimney fires, correct? That's one of the things we want to talk about, yeah, okay. absolutely. Okay, well, let's get started. Chimney fires. You know, we actually started doing a study. Uh, Brent gathered up a bunch of information, and uh, we started to gather it one by the whole year, and it's like, you know what, that doesn't make sense. Let's, let's, let's disseminate this information per season. So we were able to go back how many years now? Uh, we went back uh, three or four years. Yeah, and, and we saw a trend happening that, uh, which is kind of disturbing to us. Out of all the fires we responded to, um, that first year I think we had 21% of those were, were chimney fires or chimney fire related, something to do with the chimney. Um, second year was 25%. Uh, and and last season was uh, up to 36 percent. Why do you think these are increasing? You know, having been in, in the investigator on a, some of these fires, I'm um, seeing a few different things. Uh, one is the the blown in insulation coming in and, and falling in on top of the piping. Um, the new style of chimneys, how they're making them is, is you have this chimney chase built out of wood and then in the middle of that chase you have a triple wall metal pipe. Uh, you know, the old style of chimneys were made out of brick and mortar or, or some kind of cement block and, and all the way up. And, and so those tend to be pretty fail safe. And are these the chimneys that are usually it's, it's happening to, you know, like a certain in 1970 to 1989, you're cool. But anytime after that, be careful. I mean, is yeah. there anything that you could no. old houses, new houses, which are going up? Is it pretty? You know, the new construction seems to be going with the new style of, of the, the wood ch framed in uh, chase with the, the triple wall pipe through it. Um, but we've seen chimney fires in both cases, so it's it's kind of. Uh, in fact, I remember one of the fires that we went to, um, the, the people had built a, a fake um, front uh, fireplace, the kind of, kind of the facade over the, the facade, front of it, yeah. uh, and it had blocked off all the air vents. Well, that, that fake, the facade was built out of wood and then the fake stone put on that to make it look like a brand new hearth. Well, in that space Pretty. in between there, it over time got hot with that air venting, that hot air going into that space. And over time, it caught that space on fire, which then took the house and burned the house. Now, does this matter if it's, you know, chimney versus, uh, you know, wood stove? I mean, is that is there a difference there? Because I know, does that matter? I mean, well, we have a wood stove. It's phenomenal. Yeah. <laughs> well, when you're dealing with a chimney, um, there, there's certain things that need to happen every, every year. You, you need to clean that chimney. So regardless of the type of construction that it is, whether it's new style, old style, solid masonry, because uh, one of the things that we run into, and, and you can probably, how many more of those uh, false alarm type chimney fires do you guys respond to? You're, we respond to a lot of those. And what's that, um, what is that, that just, it's getting stuffed up and Yeah, and they don't have their, their dampener open far enough. Sometimes it's closed too much and smoke will come out into the house. So uh, they need to have, if they can't clean it, they need to have somebody come in and clean and inspect it for them each year, each season. Is it after the season or after and before the season? 
it's either way. If you want to do it after the season or before the season. A lot of people uh, wait too long mm -hmm. and then there's snow on the roof and nobody wants to get on the roof when it's snowing. So I would suggest doing it after each season That's when the weather's it. nice. Yeah. Well, and, and even some people will even do it two or three times during the season. You know, they just are that concerned about it. And so it's because that creosote and what the creosote is, it's, it's fuel that's not burned efficiently or it's you're using wood that's not been cured properly. And, and so that tar like, you know, pitchy that comes off of the wood and and it creates this what we call creosote. And a good way to describe that for people that don't know is if you've ever seen a railroad tie. And that black stuff that's that they soak the railroad tie in to keep it from deteriorating, that's creosote. And, and so it's really sticky, yucky, nasty, smells like tar and methyl ethyl bad stuff or whatever. <laughs> and that coats the inside of the chimney. Um, and sometimes what can happen too is even um, that creosote will get so thick in there and then eventually you'll have what would kind of like a flapper that'll come down so, and, and then it, and, and then it blocks off the exhaust of the mm -hmm. chimney itself. And, and then that stuff actually becomes very flammable. So once it gets up to a certain temperature, it'll actually catch on fire and then continue to ignite at that point. And um, this is this is both just, uh, you know, regular um, wood burning stoves and um, it, fireplaces exactly, that it can happen right. into. Yeah. And it'll also clog up the spark arrestor at the top of your wood stove piping. And if those, uh, those little squares that are supposed to let out the smoke get all clogged up, that'll catch on fire. And that creosote will carry that flame right up to the spark arrestor and, and the whole thing will catch on fire. And what about pellet stoves? They have you know, even thing? pellet stoves can create uh, that, that creosote. It's, it's usually not as uh, um, drastic and, and you don't have the buildup on those as much, but they can still. Unless you're not, unless it's been years since you know you've cleaned right. it. They still need to be cleaned from time to time and inspected, at least inspect them. And inspect is just making sure you can see that. Right. Uh, you want to look to make sure you can see some of the, the metal piping. If you see a bunch of, we should have got some pictures for you, but, uh, <laughs> um, but yeah, it's just kind of some gnarly black uh, and in some cases, it, it's so thick in there, I've seen it where you can't even see through it. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and that'll be an eight inch pipe. What's the worst wood to burn? I'd Just say ponderosa pine. Yeah. It has so much sap in it. And uh, unless it's really dried out to get rid of a lot of that sap, um, a lot of people are burning it and then not cleaning their chimneys and that creosol will build up. And that's where you want to clean your chimney two or three times during the winter season to get rid of that so it doesn't build up if you're burning pine. Right, and, and anything that's uncured even. Right. And cured, just it sits outside it's and been, dries up as right, much in like right. a couple years or, mm -hmm. yeah, I can see that. We, Typically we, we recommend to people at least a, a, a whole years of drying mm -hmm. time. Mm -hmm. to, to get that good wood in right. there. Okay. So um, how many, do you guys educate the community about these fires? I mean, where were these fires? Where did they happen? Just in Timber Mesa from the Linden area, Sholo to Lakeside? I mean, what is? You know, those chimney fires will happen anywhere. Yeah, so but it's not just us. This but, numbers right. is, is just Th you those are Those were numbers that we gathered for fires that we responded to. Some of those were even out of district. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Uh, but, but they were all numbers that our crews from Timber Mesa responded to. Right. So it, it, it's, you know, and, and if we were to pull numbers from other fire districts, you know, and compare them all, we'd have to, you know, eliminate and, okay, you know, but those, we feel comfortable with those numbers that that trend that what we're seeing is, you know, with it, we were seeing a drop in how many overall fires and, and the chimney fires. And so that's why the percentage is going up because we're, we're maybe getting the education out there to be careful with all kinds of fires. And so we're having less con, um, home fires or structure fires, but we're still having the same amount or more of the chimney related, you know, and that's how we documented it as chimney fires. So, so far that you've had somebody who did some repairs to their house and make it look fancier that caused that. And obviously they didn't have, um, it, did it on their own. So they didn't have the education to, to do that. 
and um, you have the stuff that folds around the chimney pipe that mm -hmm. has caught on fire, and then you just have people who stick too much stuff in there. Don't doesn't that happen? Sometimes yeah. they build too big a fire for their wood stove or or for the piping in their house and it gets way too hot. And like Kirk said, if they have insulation in that attic space that's too close to that piping, you know, it'll ignite that blown insulation and then we have an attic fire. And so. is that with these chimney fires, how many houses do you guys know have been lost completely? Or are you guys you know, able to get there in time? You know, we actually had a pretty significant one last year in Sierra Springs area. Or uh, is Sierra, that Sierra, Sierra Pines. Pines. Sierra Pines. Yeah. Um, get my subdivisions correct here. But, uh, and it was a good sized home, fairly new. Uh, and in fact, the, the family was sitting in their home when this was happening and, and burning up in this attic space above them oh, darn. without even knowing. In fact, when our first, our, our first crew that made entry, the TV's still going and they're watching the news as it's going on as the crews are going around to shut the power off because and you know so it's it's amazing that they can be very quiet and and what alerted what the the family was the smoke detector started going off and so I was like that's not right and they could hear some extra noise that didn't seem just right and and so that but yeah it started burning up in that attic space mm -hmm. and 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 then by the time we were able to get all the fire completely out because of all the hit closed and hidden spaces within this home, um, the home was pretty much, a, a, a good significant portion of it was burned. Um, and most of the, the roof was had, had fell, caved in at that point too. So. Oh, darn. Right. Uh, so yeah, and some of the other ones that we got to, we, we catch them early enough and very little damage. But they all could have been prevented. Exactly. But you know, just doing some simple basic maintenance. Have somebody, you know, and, and we do have a lot of elderly people up here. If you can't do it yourself, you know, get somebody to go up there and, and check it for you. Uh, in fact, we even did a little internet search. Right. You know, are there people up here that do chimney sweeping? And, and we, we come across some names. Mm -hmm. So they're out there. Um, you know, there's, I know there's a couple of companies in town that deal with stoves. We do it ourselves. I, in fact, I, I do it. I get up yeah. there and push the brush down, and then it gets stuck, and you're like, ah. And then Rob gets mad, but <laughs> eventually it's clean every year. We also use those sticks. Do you ever hear about those? And, sticks? and I've seen right. some of those where you can buy those that, that they say that they'll clean the chimney. Yeah. And, and you, we you still know. clean it after, though. We right. use those when we're burning throughout, right. and then we clean it after. Right. And and so yeah, follow the direction on those. I think they're, you know, they have to be somewhat effective. They're you know because i think <laughs> they even money. have a ul <laughs> listing on them so mm -hmm. so they they do what they say they're going to do right now you had brought something up uh, talking about that last fire that was, most of it was significantly lost was the smoke detectors actually oh, warned them and saved them right correct and, and, and does that happen a lot you, you know uh, and that, that was one of our main focuses going into the schools this year was talking about smoke detectors and in fact the the nationwide from from our national fire protection association nfpa um, the theme for going into for fire prevention week this month was smoke detectors or uh, uh, or smoke alarms a sound you can live with mm -hmm. um you know and, and and we focused really on that going with the kids and talking about, you know, all the different things because smoke alarms and smoke detectors are very effective if they're taken care of. Right. Um, and one of the studies that I saw that it, it's about 71% uh, of, of home fires that you're 70% you're more likely to survive that home fire if you have a working smoke detector. So, you know, those aren't we like to see a hundred percent, but oh, absolutely, because they save lives. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, but you know, it's it's, and I can't remember all the exact numbers in that study, but but it was interesting coming back. It, it seemed about half half of the homes that caught on fire either did not even have a smoke detector in there at all, or or they had a smoke detector and they didn't work, and, and that's pretty sad. Uh, you, you know, and, and I know I've actually been on some of these fires myself um, after the fact and doing some investigation. And I like, if I can find access to smoke detectors within that home, I want to find out, was it working? 
uh, were there batteries in it, things like that. Just, just from my own personal knowledge, were, was this family doing everything they could to protect themselves? Yeah. You know, and I've been to some fires where you can still see the, the or hear the smoke detector. It's trying everything it can to it's get this awful noise coming out, but it's still trying to do its job. And it's all melted and <laughs> kind of black and burned, and but it's still trying to work. And I've, I've gone into other ones, same thing. It's all melted and stringy and black and open it up and there's not a single battery in there. Well, and the majority of the people like always end up taking their batteries out of the kitchen one. Because, well, and, and you know, on requirements, you're not even required to have one in the kitchen. Because if we're in the kitchen, and even though kitchen fires is still the leading cause of home fires, um, when you're when you're cooking that person needs to stay in there and watch mm -hmm. and they become that smoke alarm mm -hmm. they, and, and they're supposed to be the one you know it's not okay to put something on the cook and go in the other room and watch tv and because we get distracted or go to the store right. and come back and, and honestly right. even nowadays with people on our cell phones uh, you know yeah. We might even be in the same room, and are, how much are we really paying attention? I got us distracted on my cell phone, and I have a CO2 detector as well, and I cleaned out the, the, our um, wood stove. I cleaned it out, and I put it in the little metal thing, and I was like, da, 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 and talked over here, and then I left, and then I came back, and my alarm was going off, and I'm like, what the heck? Well, I forgot to take it outside, and it wasn't hot at the time, but it had redone that, and the whole house was full, filled with smoke, and I'm like, oh, you've got to be kidding me. <laughs> what an idiot. But, you know, it happens, but it because does. it happens, to have, I'm glad I had the CO2 detector. Nobody was at my house, which was good. And I had the smoke detectors. Had I had not, you know, I wouldn't have that extra extra warning. I mean, when I got to the county, the first thing I did was I checked all their smoke detectors. And I had one lady going, I'm like, there's no batteries in any of these. Oh, they keep beeping, so we turn them off. That's because they need a new battery. Yeah. When they beep, just put a new battery. <laughs> you know, and, and that's one of the things we teach the kids. It's like, if one goes off in the house, change all the batteries. Mm -hmm. You know, and then we talk sense. about, you know, because the batteries need to be changed once a year you know so I tell them you know there's how many days in a year 365 well out of all those days how are you gonna remember which day you're gonna change the battery you know we tell them you know and it's funny because I ask them so how many of you guys have more than one birthday a year you know and I'll, several of them yeah I got three I got five <laughs> yeah, yeah it's like yeah you wish right <laughs> but uh, but no and it's like you know hey maybe that's a day to pick it or you know New Year some of them you know will come up that or Christmas or you know, pick a day that you always are going to remember that, hey, you know, oh, yeah, it's time to, it's my birthday. I'm going to give myself the gift of life. I'm going to change the batteries in my smoke detector. You know, and it's a simple, you know, once you get into that habit, and I think that's the biggest thing is getting into that habit of doing it. You know, because honestly, and one of the things we talk with the kids about, too, is how often has anybody ever cleaned a smoke detector out? You know, do we ever get dust up here on our mountain? No. <laughs> <laughs> Not at yeah, all. No dust, right? <laughs> so, well, in, in the smoke detectors, they're, they can get dust in them. As, in fact, I've even seen somewhere that ants have moved in and set up ho house in a, in a smoke detector. But definitely we can get dust. How many of ever, anybody have ever cleaned the dust? And can it make that detector uh, become non-functional? Absolutely. Or it can give off a false alarm. You know, they, they're, they're up out of sight or out of mind. So now are people calling the department cat mix and asking for you guys to come and reach the high places? Oh yeah. 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 We get requests to do that uh, a lot, especially with the elderly population that we have. A lot of them don't want to get up on ladders so they can call us. We'll come out and change those batteries for them. Um, another thing that we suggest to go along with uh, what Kirk says is test those every month, you know, and uh, if they need us to come out and test them for them, we'll do that too. So oh, that's awesome. Yeah, yeah and, and they should take advantage of it, especially older. I mean, if they're capable, come on, you can change right. the battery. But the old folks and yes. the high ceilings that don't have the ladders to reach those. Well, and some of the elderly issue. people, we don't want them climbing ladders. Exactly. <laughs> no, yeah, because <laughs> you know? then it's going to be a hip call later on that yeah. evening. Yeah. <laughs> and we've even went out on those calls where they put uh, the, the ladder up against the roof to go up and clean their chimney. Oh, and God. then their ladder will blow down. So uh, oh, we no. went out and helped them <laughs> off the roof before too. So it's it's good if uh, if they let us know that they're going to be doing something, we can go out and help. So, That's awesome. Yeah. yeah, you guys do a lot of good. Well, and and the other one of the other points that we're teaching people, and that most people don't realize that smoke detectors they don't last forever. 
um, 10 years is what all the longer that they're warranted for. So to every 10 years, you need to replace all the smoke detectors in your home. And, you know, and that's one of the things I asked the kids because I had two different detectors. And, and the one that I always did push the test button on was the oldest one. And so I, I'd uh, set that off. And, you know, because some, in fact, it was, there was one time I, I tested it. And then when I got to the point in the presentation, I asked them how old they were. And I'd say, well, which one's older, you know? And a lot of them would cho chose the new one as being the oldest one. I'd tell them what, how date, how, what the dates were made. Because um, on the back of the smoke detector, if you cannot find a date, then those are really old. Right. All the ones that they make nowadays, they, they put the date when they're made. And, and one of the ones I was using as a demonstration was actually made in 2002, which makes it 13 years old. Wow. And, and it was funny, on one presentation, I, I pushed the button at the beginning and it worked. And when I went to show them after date, I pushed it again and it didn't work. So. You, you can't rely uh, on it. Exactly. It may yeah. it may seem like it's working, but should we trust it? No, absolutely not. And all the smoke detectors, do they all take the same type of battery, that square one? one Usually they're all 9 volt. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The majority. You may find an occasional one that's something different. Right. In fact, there's even some now that you can actually get a 10-year battery. And it'll tell you right up as you're buying them that, that it has a lithium ion battery in there. So, and, and those are typically going to be the ones that are hardwired. So they tie into the electrical system of so the house. So if one goes off, they're all going off. Mm -hmm. and, 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 uh -huh. and they guarantee that those will last for 10 years. Um, so you, those you don't have to change the batteries, but you better make sure that those are the right that, the, that you have that 10 year battery that's in there. In fact, you can't even make access to the battery. Now, and then that brings up another thing. There's a lot of people who leave during during the mm -hmm. winter and they're gone. Um, it's probably a good thing for them to actually have a neighbor or a buddy that they know in case their alarms go off or somebody, you know, their panel or whatever in a house, because I know that's a big right. issue during the winter to have, you know, call this person who is local in case of an incident, because you right. guys go across come across that yeah often. and it's always good to have that key holder that lives close by so we don't have to make entry into their home to see if it's okay you know if they have an issue so that's a great idea and thanks for bringing that up so yeah, make your job a little easier yeah exactly <laughs> well, because our next option is even though the guys like to break doors <laughs> uh, we try to teach them not to right <laughs> um, <laughs> but it's so fun. <laughs> Do less harm. <laughs> Try right. before you pry. Yeah. <laughs> but but yeah, it's because we're about customer service. Mm -hmm. you, you know, we don't want to damage people's homes. But if the, if we have no other option and and we feel that there's a fire inside, are you going to break that door down and go take care of that fire? Yeah. Because then we're doing less damage rather than what the fire, let the fire take the whole house at that point. Right. Yeah. So. And it, it's nice to be able to have the access to people's homes just to make it sure it's safe. Right. And it's not necessarily for the fire department. It could be for the police department as well or something, you know, is going on and, and somebody needs to get there. So the people yeah. leaving town should actually make sure that they have somebody local that can. Yeah, we don't want to break a door down if it's a false alarm. Then they no. have that added cost and it's never a good customer service. <laughs> Definitely not. I'm sure if there's no fire, they're not really happy about it. If there is a fire, then they're okay with it, right? Right. right. <laughs> well, Most cases. <laughs> thank you guys so much for coming on. This was good information. Um, I'm just kind of bummed about the uh, how the chimney fires are going up. Obviously, there needs to be some education. Mm -hmm. People need to well, figure and, that and out. Something that's not even associated with chimney fires, but it, kind of along the same lines is People that have ashes, that have fireplaces, and they take the ashes out, you know, don't put them into paper bags or plastic bags or and set them can. on the porch or put them in the garbage. Mm -hmm. they, they need to go into like a metal container mm -hmm. and out in the open. Um, e even if you want to douse them with water, you know, before you actually dump them. Uh, and, and honestly, the best thing, if you have a garden or, mm -hmm. or your neighbor has a garden, that's a great place to put it. Puts that nitrogen back in the soil. So I do. I throw them in the snow in my garden. That's right. Nice. But don't, <laughs> don't put those, even if they're a day or two old, they can right. still be harboring some, some heat within those coals as soon as it gets a little bit of wind. Uh, you know, and it, and it can easily take a whole house down. Well, that's the same thing. If you don't, if you can't put your hands in it, it's not out. Right. Correct. So, Just right. like a campfire. Well, yeah. thank you guys so much for coming on the show. Thanks Appreciate for having us. Thanks. Yeah. And thank you for watching Safe and Sound, and we'll see you next month. <laughs>